Hey everybody, bonjour, danse, zonga benisi, and unetish nakas kanuto tem. My name is Clayton Thomas Mueller. I'm an organizer and I uh, uh, come from Pugatawagan First Nation, Northern Manitoba, Treaty 6 territory. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to do a little vlog today to ask a couple questions and to just, I guess, start a thread, a conversation about unceded versus ceded territory in Canada. Um, I think that, you know, there is such exciting things afoot, uh, especially with the recent Chilcotin Supreme Court victory, um, you know, that have really stirred uh, the spirit of the Indigenous sovereignty movement right across the country. Um, one thing, though, that I'm, I'm you know, I flag uh, to all of you who watch this vlog is, you know, I've observed on social media and, you know, uh, um, you know, just in my conversations with people across the country, First Nations peoples, um, a, a bit of a, well, a, a bit of a confusing narrative, and 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 I'm hoping that you know maybe one of you experts out there can clarify this for me. You see, as a treaty native, um, it is my understanding that the the ancestors of, of of mine and all treaty native people in this country who signed into treaty. Um, you know, that they never signed away their land, um, that they never signed away our collective rights, that, you know, the treaties um, in the process of making treaty um, was a process that, you know, far outdated um, the interaction between the British Crown and First Nations. You know, there are many treaties between different First Nations uh, within Canada and, you know, into the across the medicine line into the lower 48 states. Um, that go way, way, way back um, before the, the you know, uh, when, when Canada was just a glimmer in the king of, of England's uh, 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 eye. And, um, you know, and I think that, <clears throat> I think that uh, there is a, there is a, 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 a challenge afoot when narratives, uh, for example, the narrative and, and the rightful the rightfully placed concern about the modern day BC treaty negotiation process, um, you know, by BC based indigenous peoples, um, uh, you know, people need to be concerned about that process. It is a process of uh, termination of collective rights, uh, it is a process uh, that leads to the municipalization of First Nations in BC. Um, but quite often, I hear groups in BC. Um, you know, reference that treaty territories are, are, you know, that or treaty Indians gave up their land, um, um, and and within that narrative, you know, especially if it's like just in in passing or a social media comment or a tweet, um, I think it reinforces and does a service to the narrative that the settler colonial state of Canada puts out. Um, around their um, understanding of the spirit and intent of the numbered treaties one through eleven. And I guess my question for all of you is how do we build a shared movement narrative, um, you know, um, you know, something that social movements like Idle No More um, can utilize that build unity amongst uh, diverse social movement partners um, within the indigenous sovereignty movement across this country. Um, I think that, you know, when we look at the, the state of colonization, um, dispossession and you know, and say, um, you know, Atlantic Canada compared to that of British Columbia, um, they're fundamentally different. And I also think there's an extra three or four hundred years of engagement, um, you know, with 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 the occupiers of our traditional lands uh, across Turtle Island um, that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, and so, you know, uh, I guess for me, um, you know, as I go through the process of awakening and deepening my understanding of of Treaty Six and what it means to to come from um, you know an organizing framework um, that is about uh, uplifting and and defending the original spirit and intent of our ancestors who signed treaty with the British Crown. Um, how do I work with? Uh, or how do any treaty Indians work? Uh, and share a narrative of resistance that is about, 
you know, something deeper um, with with our brothers and sisters who live in areas that where treaty uh, treaty doesn't exist, uh, say like in British Columbia. Um, you know, one that is 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 about uh, building power, not uh, disempowering. Um, one that is about um, you know focusing in on our inherent rights as indigenous peoples, inalienable rights um, um, that are collective in design and not individual. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because it's it's just something that's been spinning around in my head, and I find myself reacting um, and 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 feeling. Um, uh, like I'm unable to uh, address these things, and it bleeds into a larger conversation about our movement. Um, you know, the the you know when we talk about strategy and tactics and the political and legal framework um, that we do advocacy. Um, you know, things are fundamentally different in the plains than they are, say, in uh, northern British Columbia and the Unistoten, uh fight or the Yinkadeni Alliance. You know, who are fighting both the Pacific Trails uh, Natural Gas Project, the LNG Project in BC, or, or the Northern Gateway Project, the Tar Sands Pipeline to Asia, or, uh, you know, Dene people in northeastern BC that are fighting Site C Dam, um, you know, uh, compared to, you know, Pamichikamak Cree people, you know, from Treaty 5 that are fighting uh, mega hydro expansion in, in uh, the province of Manitoba. I think that th there are there are some big differences there, um, and and I guess, you know, as we as we deal with the pan Aboriginalization of our struggle by non Native Canadians and by the settler colonial state of Canada, um, you know, what how do we put a narrative out that doesn't um, somehow um, dishonor, I guess, the the resistance that say Plains tribes or woodland tribes, um, places like Treaty 3, um, you know, put up, um, or the Haudenosaunee with the Turo Wampum or the Mi'kmaq, uh, you know, with the uh, Maritime Treaties, you know, all of these groups resisted colonization. All of these groups did not cede their land to the British Crown. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of these groups didn't even speak English back in the day or French for that matter. Um, so I just think that, you know, I want to unsimplify um, and unconfuse the very valid concern that First Nations, I think, share across this country over modern day treaty negotiation processes that are really the termination tables agenda of the federal government. Um, designed to municipalize our, our communities, designed to, you know, tie us into an eternity of taxation to the colonial settler state of Canada. Um, how do we, um, you know, build a narrative that that is rooted in, you know, the, the collective rights that we all share as Indigenous peoples, as the first peoples of these lands that are, 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 are empowered by various international and domestic legal instruments, such as the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the ILO Convention 69, um, you know, and, and, and many, many more. Um, anyway, that's just my rant. Um, love to hear your thoughts on it. Post a video comment or, or uh, post, uh, you know, just a written comment. And uh, yeah, hope you have a great day. <laughs>